Hey guys, in this video I'm going to explain the third logic game of the June 2014 LSAT, which is LSAT Prep Test 72. In this game we have five artifacts that we're assigning to three different countries, I, N, and S. So I would consider this game to be a grouping matching game because we're matching the artifacts to the countries. I've laid out a bunch of rules here and I'll explain each one. We have W and Y together in the same country, so I put them as a vertical box there. X goes to Norway or Sweden, so it cannot go to Iceland. There are more artifacts in Iceland than in Norway. And finally, if V is Iceland, then Z is, is Sweden. So I wouldn't bother the doing, doing the contrapositive of this last one here because the result would be too ambiguous. Learning that Z does not go to Sweden would mean that it goes to I or N, and learning that V does not go to Iceland would mean that it goes to N or S, so a little bit too vague to be worth writing down. Now, as for the rule with I more going to I than going to N, I wouldn't represent that on the diagram here right now because maybe I gets one and n gets zero. They never say that every country has to get an artifact at all. So this is pretty much all I would lay out before getting into the questions themselves. So let's start off with number 13, which is a typical orientation question. We'll just take one rule at a time and apply it to all five looking for violations. So we know that w and y have to go together, scanning through the choices, a violates that having them separated. None of the others violate it though. Move on to the next one. I has more than N does. Looks good for B, but C has them having two each. Unacceptable, so C is gone. None of the others violate that. Moving on to V, I requires Z, S. Scanning through there. D violates it because it has V at I and Z at N. So D is gone, E is okay on that. And finally, X does not go to Iceland, E violates that, leaving B is our answer for number 13. Next, number 14, if Y and Z were both in Iceland, what's the minimum that we could have in Sweden? Well, if Y and Z were Iceland, we'd have to have W there also, because W and Y are always together. Then we'd have X and V left to allocate, but they could go pretty much anywhere within N and S. So we could even have zero of them going to Sweden and both X and V going to Norway. That'd be perfectly fine. So our answer for 14 is A. So just pick it and move on. Next, number 15, what cannot be true? So each of these choices is talking about having two variables at a particular country. You could just run through all five, but I would prefer to be a bit more strategic about it and look towards what's least likely to be possible. In this case, I would say that's having two things at Norway due to the rule that we have to have more at Iceland than Norway. So if Norway had two, Iceland would have to have three. So let's look at the Norway related choices. We've got A, V and X both on Norway. If V and X were both on Norway, let's put that down and see what would happen. If we had V and X on Norway, then we'd have to have W, Y, and Z on Iceland. That works out perfectly fine, not really any issues there, so A is okay. Looking at E, W and Y on Norway, what does that do? If we had W and Y on Norway, then we'd have to have everything else being V, X, and Z on Iceland. And having V, X, and Z on Iceland is a problem because V, I requires Z, S. For that reason, E is going to be our answer. It's impossible. So what you really want to be thinking about here is, you know, if you could have predicted to this level of specificity, you would say, okay, since having two on Norway requires three on Iceland, your Norway-related choice would have to mention V in order to be possible, because if Iceland had the V, 
then Z would have to go to S, but with 3 Iceland, 2 Norway, there is no room to have anything at all at Sweden, but there's no reason you would think of that up front. I would just try out A and E. Next, number 16, if both W and X were on Sweden, then what must be true? So, of course, Y would have to go there also, since W and Y must always go together. Then we've got V and Z left to allocate. And remember, we've got to have more on I than on N, so we can't have one of them on I and one of them on N. We'll have to have one of the two on I for certain, and then maybe the other one of the two will go on Sweden. And in fact, looking at it, if we've got V on I, of course, Z would have to go to S. If we have Z on I, well, then V can't go to I also, so... V would have to go to S, again, because of that conditional. So it's really going to be one on I, one on S, it seems. We'll just scan through the choices regarding what must be true. None of them on Norway, absolutely. Because if we had one on Norway, we could only fit one more on Iceland, and they'd be equal, not having I greater than N. So for that reason, A is actually our answer to number 16. Next, number 17. How many of them could go on Norway at some point? Well, we know back from number 15 that we can't have W and Y there. So right away that gets rid of two out of the five, leaving us with down to three, leaving us with V, X, and Z. And there's no particular reason to believe that we couldn't have any one of those there at some point. Obviously, we can't have too many. We know from choice 15A that we could have both V and X there. So that already gives us at least two. So A's gone here. And there's no reason to think that we couldn't have Z there at some point as well. Not with V and X, of course, but maybe just Z by itself. No reason to think that couldn't happen. So it could be any of V, X, and Z going to Norway, giving us three choice C. Finally, number 18, general cannot be true question. Scanning through all five, we see they're talking about specifically what would be on Sweden. So you want to be thinking, what does that leave us with left to allocate? So scanning through all of them, you have to think about what are the others that would remain. Now, about Sweden specifically, we have a rule saying that, you know, if V is I, then Z is S. So you want to be thinking about choices that don't mention those variables, because that would force you to allocate both of those elsewhere. So looking through them, I see that, you know, one's not mentioning any of them. We really only have choice C, W and Y on Sweden. So I would start there. So if we put only W and Y on Sweden and no others, we would still have V, X, and Z left to allocate. And where are those guys going to go? Well, if V was on I, Z's on S, obviously we have no room for that right now because S has got only W and Y and nothing else. So we're going to have to put V on N. Now, the issue is that X can't go on I. X is going to go on N or S as always. We're not putting X on S, so it's going to have to go on N. So we've got only Z left to put on I, that's a major problem because how are we going to have more on I than on N when we've already got two things on N? It's not going to work out. So for that reason, C is our answer to 18. Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily take this approach up front when scanning through the choices. So you might just have to work through all five, if not, which is going to be a bit more time consuming. But this is the more efficient way to approach this question. And that's the game.